Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's great to be back with you again for our weekly podcast and our weekly chat. Hoping that the past week, the Thanksgiving week, was a blessed one for you and your loved ones. That you all enjoyed the, the festal day and you took the time to be family. And thank God for all of his blessings. So, we move into the Christmas Lenten season, Advent. And this morning I'd like to consider for your thought processes, what our responsibilities are as Orthodox Christians as we do proceed through the Holy Christmas Lenten season. So stay tuned. To begin though, let's start with the beautiful singing of God is with us, the hymn of Compline in the Orthodox Church.
I just love that hymn. That's so awesome. Um, so let's talk about the, the Holy Advent season, the Christmas Lenten cycle, if it were. Uh, and we know that it begins 40 days before the Feast and the Nativity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It starts on the Feast of the Holy and all praised Apostle Philip. And sometimes for this reason, the Christmas Lent is referred to as the Fast of Philip. Although the coincidence of the Feast of the Apostle Philip in the beginning of the Christmas Fast is as accidental, humanly speaking, the eyes of faith may see in it a certain providential aspect of God. According to the Gospel of St. John, Philip is one of the first of the apostles to be called by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On the day after the calling of Andrew and another of St. John the Baptist's disciples, since he was not named as probably the Apostle John himself, Philip is called by the Lord. Like Andrew, who went and called his brother Simon Peter, Philip goes and calls his friend Nathaniel. The story is told this way in the Gospel. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and as he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew, and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, his friend, and said to him, We have found him, of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus from Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael answered him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. The story is typical of John's Gospel. The people first encounter the man, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. They meet him as a man, the one of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. But then they go further. When they come to see is that this man is not merely the promised prophet and teacher. He is the anointed, the Christ, the Messiah, the King of Israel. He is the Son of God. Indeed, he is God himself in human form. And that really is the basis of where we start as Orthodox Christians, my dear viewers, in terms of approaching the the. Christmas, Lent, and Advent season. Um, no doubt, because of the, the seasonal activities that go on, this Lenten season is, is a challenge for us. I mean, you know, we all know this. We're all running to and fro and trying to get things accomplished, both in our houses and, and at work, putting our, getting our projects done, getting our, our, our decorations done, getting our presents bought and wrapped and, and all the meal cooking, whatever. But also, we need to remember, as, as Orthodox Christians, um, what this whole Advent season uh, carries for us in terms of responsibilities. Let, let's start here. Someone once remarked to me that, in jest, of course, that Lent is really a time of preparation before the big holiday so we can face all the food, noise, fellowship, and joy that it brings after preparing ourselves spiritually. One time, one of my children came to me and said, Gee, Dad, we have Lent before Christmas to make us so hungry that when Christmas comes, we can eat all the food that has been prepared by Mom. Yeah, I guess. Sure. Now, these comments may seem a little funny, but there is some truth to them. Food does taste better when it's preceded by a period of fasting. Um, but preparation for Christmas is not only about physical food. It's also about food for the soul. Especially about food for the soul. As our deprived earthly bodies through fasting are in great expectation for the coming of the abundance of the Christmas feast, so are our souls. Just as the physical food is better than after fasting, so the spiritual food for the soul that is prepared for Christmas. To enjoy Christmas, we need some preparation. As a matter of fact, the better that preparation is, Advent, the better we can enjoy the event itself, Christmas. The world was prepared by God to receive his Son in the fullness of time. He prepared the world in two ways, in the dark and in the shadow. Let me explain. In the shadow, God prepared his chosen people, the people of Israel. Everything that took place at this time with the people of Israel was done to point to Christ's coming and his mission. The story of, the prep of this preparation is well described in the Old Testament. In the dark, God prepared the pagan world for the coming of Christ. 
The pagan world was finally realizing that their gods and idols were either dead or dying. A world that was seething in immorality was ready for the message of Jesus. A world that was lost in darkness was ready for him who was the light of the world. Greek philosophers such as Plato and Aristotle in their darkened ways had already prophesied about the coming of the one true and immortal God. This is the reason that in some Roman, some Romanian churches, these philosophers are included in the icons among the prophets of the Old Testament, and that is true. Christmas Lent, then, Advent, is about expectation. We are in a state of expectation, just like a mother expecting her child, as Mary was before their first Christmas. We expect the Son of God to be born, to take the form of flesh like us, and to dwell among us. But what does that mean? That means that we have to be ready to receive, in the Spirit, the newborn King. We can't do that if our hearts and minds are focused on the stuff of this world. And again, the challenge, of course, is, as busy as we are during the Christmas holiday season, we have got to make time, and not just you know, a fixed amount of time. And I, and I know growing up in the church, we, we kind of all do this. You know, we look at our calendars, then we f focus on, well, where can I fit in confession with all my busy activities? Instead of doing it in reverse. Where can my other activities fit in with my obligation to my faith? And that's, that's the real crux of the matter. If we start to reverse that process, you know, if we start to say, you know what, first week of Lent, of, of Advent, I need to plan for my confession. This is a good time for me and for my family. Let's get this done. And the next week, they're doing Compline, they're going Vespers, let's do this. And then the next week, and then the next week. So that we've plotted out our spiritual obligation our spiritual responsibilities for the good of our soul, and then we can sort of fill in around that, and it's very easy to do, speaking from experience, all the secular stuff that goes with it. Understand what I'm, what I'm kind of challenging us to do. Reverse the process, right? Don't make the secular things first and then plug in your confession wherever it fits. Do it the other way around. Personal preparation for our souls also has to take place in the dark and in the shadow. Preparation in the dark is the preparation with our bodies, our abstaining from specific foods, drinks, dance, etc. The darkness that dwells within our earthly bodies realizes that life will come to its fullness through the birth of Christ. We wait in hunger and thirst to receive a true and new life, a life forever changed by the fact that Christ, God himself, took flesh and a body and dwelt among us. Our personal preparation for the Advent season must also take place in the shadow. Hunger and thirst affect our physical beings. Is that not true? Absolutely. And we crave food and drink for our bodies. But what do our souls hunger and thirst for? Do you ever think about that? What do our souls hunger and thirst for? They hunger for light and thirst for love. They long to be filled with all the peace that comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, from His Spirit. Our souls living now in the shadow of eternal life should prepare during this Advent for the coming of that long for spiritual life and love of God. This preparation in hope and faith culminates, of course, in the feast and the activity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which brings light to our souls and overcomes the shadows of this life. The Christmas Lenten season, then, is an invitation and a challenge. We are invited to the journey with the three kings and the shepherds, following the star to the cave in Bethlehem. Again, spiritually speaking, Christmas Lent challenges us to prepare a room for him on earth, but also in our own souls. I guess we need to prepare our souls by making them clean and loving so that they may be the manger in which Christ, born anew, can dwell within us. And that's the whole, you know, we just heard the wonderful hymn, God is with us. Um, it, it, it means that if we do the preparation necessary for our souls, that also means as we're 
preparing our soul to receive Christ. We're also preparing our bodies to be able to reach out and be God's image and likeness for those around us, right? Our families, our friends, our community, our neighbors. Um, I was just at, a few days ago, I was just at a, a local establishment uh, waiting in line and uh, a person in, in ahead of me was really, you can tell, disturbed and anxious and upset and and obviously didn't want to be waiting in line and, and I thought, do I say something? No, I, yeah, I need to say something. So I tapped the person on the shoulder and I said, uh, are you okay? And the person looked at me like I was like, not with it. And he said, no, I'm not okay. I've been waiting in line for 10 minutes. Nothing's happened. We're not moving. I need to get out of here. I said, okay. I said, so I introduced myself. I was just wearing a collar, no cassock, collar and a jacket. And the person looked at me and said, is there a reason why you're talking with me? And I said, no, I just got a sense that you were, you know, upset that you're waiting in line. And, and you know, I, I firmly believe that everything happens according to God's purpose. And as soon as I said that, the person's demeanor changed. They looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, everything that happens in our daily activities happens because God allows it to happen. And we need to be aware of the fact that no matter where situation we're in, what is happening, God is a part of that situation. And the more that we can like keep that in the back of our minds, that kind of helps deal with these frustrating times when we're like waiting in line doing nothing. I always like to say a little prayer to myself, thanking God for, you know, my life, I'm breathing, it's a beautiful day, even if it's not a beautiful day, whatever. Um, and the person looked at me and said, thank you. I needed that. I said, we all need that. I said, have a great day. And they turned around and they actually started humming to themselves. And I thank God for that. That's the kind of stuff that I think that we need to, as Orthodox Christians, be more in tune to, especially now during the Christmas Lenten season. You know, God is with us in, in terms of preparing our souls and preparing our bodies to receive him on, on Christmas Day, but also to be able to go out and minister and witness to him by how we treat one another. And that's the beauty of, of, of the Christmas Lenten season. You know, not only just being nice to one another, but also praying for one another, providing alms for those in need, helping our, our churches, you know, grow in, in spirituality and faith. You know, that makes us truly, as Orthodox Christians, being responsible for what God has given us, himself in the flesh. That's all I have for today. I pray that all of you will take a good look at what our responsibilities are this Christmas Lenten season. That you'll take the time to read the scriptures, especially, you know, the ones focusing on the coming birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And also make efforts to put the spiritual life of the church and, and the liturgical worship of the church first in your Lenten experience. Okay? Let's close, of course, with our prayer to the Most Holy Mother of God. Steadfast protection of Christians, constant advocate before the Creator. Do not despise the cry of us sinners. For in your goodness, come speedy to help those who call upon you in faith. Hasten to our petition and to intercede for us, the Theotokos, who will always protect those who honor you. Thank you, dear viewers, for being with us. We thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules. Know that we lift you all up in prayer. And we ask that you continue to pray for us as well. Because when we lift each other up in prayer, we are truly united in Christ. God bless, and have a blessed Christmas Lenten season.